Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Mars Jen. I'm an, um, a serious work for uh, Text One Networks and uh, Tremicro, and I'm happy joining this conference. It's my first time. And today's topic: the sum of our fear when ICS and SCADA are compromised. And today's today's topic: we will talk about how to attack control system and how to defense. We will provide some potential strategy to you how to protect our ICS environment. It's a very important things. It's very important things. Okay. Um, I would, I want to briefly introduce TX1 Networks because this is a, a new company. It's a joint financial company by Trend Micro and Mosa. And we focus on providing cyber defense and the visibility to OT. And as you can see, Trend Micro has 30 years security knowledge in high speed DPI technology and the uh, world leader in threat research. And as we know, yeah, you can see Mosa. Mosa has uh, 31 years OT knowledge in ICS infrastructure and uh, OT protocol. So cybersecurity and the ICS infrastructure knowledge, background knowledge, we combine. That is TX1. And who are we? I'm Morris, a researcher. And I focus on the ICS and uh, SCADA security research. And at the same time, I focus on some web location, mobile app and ICS and SCADA penetration testing. <clears throat> and also I spoke at many, many conferences, like the Econ Conference, ICS Cybersecurity Conference, and the Hacker in the Box Conference. Okay, and Silmer is uh, our staff engineer, and he focuses on IT and SCADA protocol processing, and some Linux kernel program programming. <clears throat> okay, and today's online. <clears throat> and as you can see, I will di uh, divide my presentation into four parts. First, I will go and start with uh, introduce what is industrial control system. <clears throat> and you, in this part, you will know what kind of architecture and component using ICS. <clears throat> and then we will talk about the negative ICS threats. Why we need to care about ICS cybersecurity and what, what ICS security event in the past. We will demonstrate the ICS threat is real according to our honeypot. And what's more, I will discuss how hacker attack ICS? It's very easy things I will explain and I will show some demo in this part. And so <coughs> we will show how we analyze, how we find a uh, unknown protocol and how we analyze it. And we will make the exploit code to attack this PLC, to attack this ICS protocol. We will show that. <coughs> we will show that. And finally, because we need to, we know how to attack ICS PLC, ICS environment. And now we need to know how to secure our ICS environment. We will provide some situation, provide some strategy in this part. Okay, first, provide some background knowledge to you. What is industrial control system? And usually, ICS, <coughs> there are three main functions in ICS. First, control, view, and the monitor. And control function is used to control value, motors, and other components. Or maybe open a control value, yeah, like this, you know. And view function is used to watch the created states of the process in order to make right decision. And who make right decisions? OT guys, operator, ICS operator. <laughs> and second one, monitor functions. Monitor function is used to provide alarm, event condition, and warning uh, uh, ad advisory uh, process conditions in here. Okay, so. There are three main functions in ICS, and we, when, when we know ICS main function, and we talk about ICS cybersecurity. And when we talk about ICS cybersecurity, we need to know the Purdue Enterprise architecture. And this architecture is based, uh, it was developed in 1990s. <laughs> and now we call it, it's based on the IEC 62443 standard. And you, as you can see, this standard is uh, from level zero to level five. There are six levels. And as we know, as we know, from level to, from level four to level five is information technology, is IT, is IT. In this part, we have many, many server, we have many, many enterprise device, AD server, web server, kinds of application server, we are deployed in these two layers. And from level zero to level three, we call it OT, and it's ICS and SCADA, ICS and SCADA part. And we're more deep into this part. We will see this photo, this picture. This is command ICS architecture. And as you can see, 
as you can see, in this part, in this part, we have HMI, we have Freo controller, Freo device, engineering workstation, and kinds of server. It's a common ICS architecture. But I know, yeah, it's very abstract. So we want to, we will, I will show a real sample like this. This is a manufacturing and inspection line sample. And you can see, uh, this one is HMI, human machine interface. An operator will use this HMI to operate, to control, to view, to monitor the status of the production line, to, to view this, monitor this, uh, fuel device by this PLC. You can see it's a, it's a Siemens S7 PLC in here. So here we can know there are minima components in ICS, HMI, fuel device, and, uh, uh, PLC. <coughs> and then we talk about ICS operation. Before we need to, we already know the components about the ICS. And then we need to know how's wrong, how's wrong of ICS operation. So usually, usually, um, operator will use HMI to send a control command, to send a parameter to controller, to controller. Also, controller will feedback, will response the message to the human machine interface to HMI. And then, when the controller receives the message, receives the control command, they will run the control process to accurate to sensors. So this here is a cycle. It's a cycle. For example, if I want to control the temperature to 27 degree, I will use HMI to send this command. Oh, I want to send command, a temperature to controller. And uh, if the temperature data in uh, PLC is lower 27 degree, and the PLC, the controller will send Increase temperature command to the actuate and run the control command and the sensor will receive it, will detect, will monitor the situation of the temperature. So here is cycle, continuously cycle in ICS operation. And we know that this operation, when we talk about, we talk about the key, the core of ICS, programmable larger controller, PLC. And as you can see, PLC is used to implement the kinds of function, used to con IO control large timing kinds of control function, we are deploying here, and usually run the real-time operating system. So, real-time operating system, when PLC receives a command, receives a command, he will run the task, he, he will run the con uh, control command immediately. Unlike Windows device, Windows 10, Windows 7, he will task. No, in PLC, no task. Schedule like this. And the human machine interface. Usually there are two forms of, of the HMI. First part is a touch panel base. The other, the other is Windows, uh, in the, in, is a software base. And usually like this, Windows base HMI will load on to the Windows device. Windows 7, Windows SP. Okay. So usually we will, if we use the, Software base, we will use a Windows 7 and we will install a SCADA and software, software in the HMI, in the, this Windows. And in HMI, usually he will perform, uh, we are used, used to control, monitor, and long and training like function. So usually operator and H OT guys will directly face this HMI to view the situation and to control. And that's one, field device. Um, such as uh, pressure, temperature, liquid and gas flow meter meters. And I will say, in different industry, there are many, many different field devices will use it. In power industry, in water, in oil and gas, they were different. And many, many different field devices. And in recent, more and more field devices try to want to connect to the internet, build a IIoT world, build a IIoT world, more and more field devices. Want to do that. Okay. So we already know, we already know the ICS architecture, ICS components. So then we talk about why we need to care about ICS security. The negative ICS threat, we, we need to know. So before we talk about the threat, the real threats, we need to know why we need to care about ICS security. <laughs> so I want to give a three sample in different country. <laughs> and in Taiwan, my country in Taiwan, we have eight critical infrastructure centers by government, provided by government, and at least five critical infrastructure centers use and run control system, traffic system, high-tech park, 
Energy Watcher and Medi Medical. Low system, run control system. Run control system. And in Japan, there are 14 critical infrastructure centers and more than nine critical infrastructure centers run control system, including petroleum, railway, medical, gas, water, many centers will run control system. And that's one, United States. There are 16 critical infrastructures. And more than nine also, more than nine critical infrastructure run control system, and including nuclear react and uh, um, defense industrial base. So can you think alive if those control systems are hacked, are compromised. We will, we know water, we know oil, we know power, and we know traffic system. It's so dangerous, so terrible things in our life. So why we need to care about? Because it's very important things. It's related with our life, with our people's life. So we need to care about that. But you will say, maybe I says, and maybe control systems is very, very secure. There will not happen any control system event. But I will say, no. From 2010 to now, we face, we meet, we see many, many control system security accident. So according to this timeline, you can see it's just a small part. You can see power plant, power plant, oil plant, or a semiconductor, power grade, many, many critical infrastructure centers, critical infrastructure, <coughs> suffer cyber attack. So, if the lost control, lost systems are hacked, the damage will be quickly serious. So we can, we need to focus on it. And but you will say maybe just an accident, not a hacker behavior. But I will say we will provide some sample. Told you, it's a real, it's a real. According in, in 2015, Ukrainian or this power guard great <laughs> under a cyber attack, and the hacker used a phishing email. He sent a phishing email. This phishing email with the malware, Black Energy 3. And the OT guide click the email. And this the malware running and connect to the CNC. Connect to the CNC so hacker can join, can into this business network. Business network. Usually we say business network is an enterprise network. <laughs> so hacker can search some information in the business network and very lucky. This hacker find the VPN credential in the business network. And also, the hacker uses this VPN credential directly connect to the control system network. And then, the hacker use the tool in this control system network, remote, remote, open the broker. And we know in the power industry, the broker is, if you open broker, the power will outage. So in this moment, that is power grade already power off, already power edge. <laughs> and then hacker upload the malicious firmware to the Ethernet, to serial to Ethernet gateway device. So he wants to block the network traffic. So operator cannot use the network to the recovery the power. And then hacker erase the master boot records in low system, including Windows space, including Linux space. <laughs> and then he shut down the UPS distance. So in this moment, our OT guide operator already don't know how to recover the power. So he call out, he wants to call out, but the hacker used the telephone denial of service attack. So operator cannot use the phone to call out to help re recover the power <laughs> in this moment. So here, this case is real. And we can see the second ones. In 2016, also, Ukrainian power great cyber uh, attack, second ones. <laughs> and in these times, the malware industry infected HMI directly. And when the hacker attacked the, this HMI, the malware will connect to the CNC, tour based CNC. <laughs> and then hacker can use this device, those device, to, to attack the PLC, to attack the field device network. Hopefully, the controller will be attacked. So, control that. And most different things is, this first malware, this first malware support ICS communication protocol. So this is the most important part because in PLC, between PLC and HMI, we usually use the ICS communication protocol 
to communicate it. So loss protocol, IC 101, 104, and IC 161, A50, or an OPCDA, lot of them is focused on power industry. It's focused on power industry protocol. So it's very, it's first one, and we need to focus on, because in 2016, hacker already can use the ICS communication protocol from the kinds of attack. And in 2017, try and try this malware attack. Yeah, the hacker connect to the RTP station, and it try to uh, connect to the six six controller six station here six network. And six usually we say is a safe system, safety systems. And yeah, hacker deployed a uh, try and try this this malware to six controller. And also this is the first malware talking safe system. So usually. If a safe system are hacked, are hacked, the whole device, whole physical device will be shut down. So in this, in this case, all of the facilities were emergency stopped in this case. So we need to care about that. And in 2018, 18, Taiwan have a very big semiconductor factory, suffer a wanna cry, suffer a ransomware attack. However, this is an accident, but uh, in fact, that laptop connect to the control system network and uh, internal blue this, yeah, you know, internal blue is probably it's spring in the whole network and runs on it. So in this moment, HMI device, HMI Windows Server kinds of server workstation already runs on, already runs on. So operator cannot operate, cannot control the HMI anymore. So production life fail. And in this case, just three days, only three days, this company lost 250 million USD dollars. Just three days. So we know if a cybersecurity, if a accident, if an attack performed on a control system, usually will make a huge impact in our life, in our property. And yeah, in 2019, the other ransomware attack, we call Lakagoga, he attacked a North Hydro's company. And yeah, it's very quickly because the hacker in fact active directory. And then because it's uh, active directory, so he has full, full control power to every domain controller. So he spring, in spring, he delivered his malware, his ransomware to the whole device and uh, ransom it. So we know when the ransomware running, so HMI, each device cannot run anymore. So the production line failed again in this year. And many, many cases, he's just a small part. And we know the ICS accident is real, but we need to know hacker attack control is, is easy or not. But, and we can, according to this uh, ICS third advisory, we know from 2010 to now, the number of the advisory is rising year by year. But we maybe you, you need enough feeling, and we can see because each advisory have many vulnerability. We'll include it, we'll provide it, and we coding. We according the is a advisory we mapping to a national vulnerability data banks MVD. And we according use or we use CVSS 3.0. We can now oh near more than twelve hundred vulnerability about ICS. And uh, nearly 26% vulnerability is critical level. And nearly 50% vulnerability is high risk level. As we know, if the vulnerability is critical level, usually hacker can easy to use and hacker can make a huge impact use this vulnerability. So we need to focus on it because in this moment, I say some vulnerability is many and usually it's very easy to use and usually can make a huge impact. And from the other participant to view, this is MITRE, is ICH attack matrix for the MITRE. And usually we will use uh, maybe mobile MITRES, mobile matrix or enterprise matrix to know. Um, but however, usually this matrix, it want to provide a common, a common language to routine to writing. However, However, in hacker view, in hacker view, if hackers see these batteries, oh, he will know. He will know, oh, modify control logic here, modify control logic, or 
compromised web service or a modified tag or many, many ways, hacker can do that and can real impact, can real hack a control system. So however, this matrix usually is want to provide a common language. He want to provide to the risk analysis or incident analysis. But in hacker view, he will be a tool to attack. So if we use the snark net and the mapping I say some attacker matrix, we know, oh, in this case, modify control logic is very useful. We can successfully compromise control system. But you will say, it's a national hacker. It's not real. Maybe it's not real. But according to our honeypot detected, we deployed hundreds of honeypot in the global. And we focus on the different ICS protocol. We detect it. And it is, in this photo, you can see many, many ICS protocol, ICS protocol traffic want to prop, want to attack our honeypot, our honeypot. And we detect the real things. It's like this. In this year, a China trade company, an IP belongs to China trade company, this IP, he attacked our honeypot. And this, he attacked our honeypot, use those payload, payload 1, payload 2, payload 3. And we're mapping those payload. We find, oh, this payload, this attack, this prop, is very similar to the meta exploit, is prop. As is probably so we tried we guessed this trade company IP is already become a barnet. He want to perform kinds of ICS proper or ICS attack in everywhere in the global. But you may say ICS is very sensitive, so the device support ICS protocol is very rarely in the internet. So we detect it. This picture is ICS protocol in Shodan. We detect, we deploy, uh, we analyze different communication protocol, including motor bus, DMP3, Ethernet IP, and kinds of ICS protocol. In the global, we find so many devices open, connect to internet directly. So we, if I'm a hacker, I can easy to use those ICS protocol to hack, to hack. So I will show a demo in the later. And you will say, maybe um, I say it's very secure. It's very secure. But, in fact, we, according, we refer a risk report by CyberX. And this company, this report, survey 850 factory over the global, in the global. He proposed this report, and he say, 40% of industrial site has at least one direct connection to the public internet. So air gap is not real. Air gap network is not real in this modern time. And 69%, 69% of the sites still use plain text password in the ICS network. And also, it's real. And 47% of the sites are not run antivirus automatic update machine in the lost device. And the other 33%, maybe they don't install antivirus software. And 53% still use unsupported Windows operation OS, like Windows XP. And as we know, in the next year, in the next year, Windows 7 will end of service. So the percentage will increase. Will increase. And 16% of the site still at least one wireless access point, and 84% have at least one remotely access device. So, according to those reports, we know ICS is not secure at all because it connects to the internet, because it uses the parent test password, and uses the unsupported Windows OS. So it's very weak. So, we have a small conclusion in this plot. We know the vulnerability are most critical and high risk level in the ICS. And uh, the number of the, uh, the vulnerability is rising year by year, more and more in every year. And we know the security accident usually have a huge impact. And uh, ICS and SCADA is not secured at all. So we know the ICS threat is very, very critical. It's very, very critical. We need to focus it. We need to focus it. But you will say, maybe attack 
attack control system is very hard. But I will demo. It's very easy. I will show a yeah, very, very, very easy demo. Told you, compromiser ICS is very easy things. Okay. So here is a common path about from hacker from outside to attack to the inside. From internet to attack to business network. You maybe use a uh, different, um, vulnerabilities, RDP or SMB kinds of vulnerability attack to the business network and try later movement to the control system network. And then he can successfully try to control the field device network because usually in control system in ICS, they don't deploy any network device to protect between control system network and field device network. So the potential, the potential in here is very weak. And then we more deep, we see in the common access architecture, how, what, what attack vectors in here? And we sum up, there are six attack vectors in control system, including server attack, software attack, physical device attack, and wireless, and the web application. And most important is communication protocol attack. Because communication protocol usually deployed in between HMI and PLC, or PLC and field device. So there are many, many communication protocol, more than IT protocol. There are hundreds, thousands of communication protocol in the industry, in different industry. So if you can, you can see, if you want to process control, you maybe you are more boss, a public uh, protocol, or same as S7 protocol, Mitsubishi, uh, MailSecure, or MailSoft protocol or Ethernet, or Omeron Things protocol. Or you want to use power control, you will use DMP3, you will use, you will use uh, IC104 protocol. So we will say, in different industry, they will use different protocol to attack, to control, sorry, to control, to monitor the device. So, because we want to research a communication protocol attack, so we build an ICS lab, we build a real ICS lab. This lab support kinds of uh, many, many uh, ICS protocol like Ethernet IP, Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP, Ethercat, or more things. And this our target and protocol. And same as S7, S7 Plus. So many, many ICS protocol well used in here. And we build this. And as a research, as a researcher, I research this protocol and I find most Traffic, Wireshark can analyze it. You can see, oh, here, oh, ICIP and, uh, for Finet and, um, uh, Motorbus TCP. You can see here, most tra network traffic can analyze by the Wireshark. But however, we find one traffic cannot analyze by Wireshark. However, however, this communication protocol, this packet, it belongs to uh, Asia, POC vendors. And also this POC vendor is top 10 in the global. It's top 10 POC vendor in the global. So we're very interesting because we also cannot support it. Why? So we want to analyze it. We want to research it. Okay. So this is our target. This is our target. And as a hacker, we will from here to attack this POC. It's M protocol PLC. Okay. And his field device, and we will see that in later slides. Okay. So like this, PLC. And this is our hacking path. We will use MF first because we need to know which port opened in this PLC. And we find the port and we research the M protocol. And we need to research this protocol because we want to analyze. We want to send a real control command, real attack command to this PLC. So we researched and we made a Lua plugin for Wireshark because, you know, GUI, GUI interface, graphical interface can provide very, 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 very conveniently. So we use Wireshark to view this end protocol traffic and we program an end protocol exploit and we try to exploit this protocol, this protocol. And it's very hard because it's a protocol we need to build from known, from unknown to known. And uh, we find the other things because we can use this uh, FTP, this uh, 
FTP service in the PLC, we can upload the malicious, from, malicious file to this PLC without authentication. Very easy. Attack. Very easy. Make an error status in this PLC. So also we will demo it. And yeah, it's an MMAP scan result. You can see 21 power TCP power and the 507 is for N protocol. It's for N protocol. So we know it's open port and we research it. We know in this protocol, because it's ICS protocol, so it's very old. So usually, this protocol has a request and response format like this. Subheader, access route, or, or request data. And here, we need to focus his here, command and subcommand. Because usually, the ICS protocol, the key, the core of the ICS protocol is the command. Because the command from HMI to PLC, and PLC know, oh, oh, which command, which behavior, he need to do it, he need to perform it. Okay. And well, when PLC will send a response to the HMI, to the HMI. So here is the format about this M protocol. And we need to talk about the command, right? So here is a function call. We know, currently, we know uh, this protocol has 37 command. And which 37 command support device access, label access, buffer memory access, and kinds of behavior, kinds of function do it. And we analyze the different function code, different function code. And you can say, oh, you will, if you want to remote stop this PLC, you will use function code, 002. If you want to delete the file, delete the PLC file, or all kinds of file in the PLC, you will use the function code. 1822, like this, you will choose different function code to do you, the behavior you want to do. Okay, so this is a real sample, real pack, a uh, real format sample to render read a reward unit. We use function code 0403. So you can see, because in this uh, protocol, they have many, many different types. Have a binary and the ASCII. So here is binary sample. And you have 3E, 2E, for E or 1C and many, many type. So here is 3E, 3E format. So here you can see, oh, command, which can command, sub command and different request data and the re response in here, in here. So we already know, oh, the protocol. We research this protocol successfully and we build a Lua plugin for the Wireshark, for Wireshark because we want to analyze it. If we can see, we can analyze the protocol. We can try to directly attack this protocol. Okay. So here is Lua plugin deployed in the Wireshark. And we can see here, M protocol and different memory address, different command in here and response in here. So we successfully decode the M protocol. We successfully. And then we want to real, perform a real attack. So we build. Uh, exploit and let's exploit based on escapee. We build, we need to build a different friend because you know, and in the request, in ASCII mode or a uh, uh, binary mode and request and response and 3E or 4E and different friends, uh, headers. You, you will see, uh, maybe that number, PS number, destination pro number, many, many device, many, many friend. We need to build it. We based on escapee. We try to Build this. So when we build a real sample, a real exploit code, and we will perform a hacking demo, true hacking demo. First one is we remote start, stop the PLC with a function code 1002. And the other, we will try build a scenario, a tech scenario like Starnet, like a Starnet event. And we will build this a scenario like this. So we will use the function code 1401 to batch the right device, and what I will explain later. And here is a remote stop PLC. And you can say, you can see, in the left side is our attack view, and the right side is a real our PLC. So it's not wrong in this, in this time, it's not wrong. And step one, we open this PLC. So you will see this PLC status will be opened. The light will run, and we run the exploit code. We run this protocol. 
and you will see the PLC already shut down. And in general status, usually PLC never stop it because the control system will keep the operation running. So they usually they don't stop the PLC. But however, we can easily attack with the M protocol command to attack this PLC. And we just sent a pa packet. We can successfully attack this PLC. This PLC. So here is a uh, Wireshark and based on M protocol, we can we, we will see how oh, we use stop remote start function to stop this PLC. To stop this PLC. It's very easy. And second one's demo, second demo is command injection. And as you will see, in this here is our HMI, and here is our field device. So you can see, you will see, oh, it's a light, different light. I will be mapping the position. And here, sorry, oh, here. And 10 to mapping here, and 11 mapping to here. You, you will see here, here light on and light off. So it's normal status. And uh, you will see here is a uh, 30, uh, 13 seconds. It, it is a uh, automatically switch second setting. So every seconds, every 30 seconds, he will change the light. He will change the light. So I want to build a scenario. And this scenario is like Starnet. And as we know, the Starnet event, the Starnet event, Attacker modify the frequency of the motor from high speed to low speed to high speed in a short time. Just uh, maybe one minute, two minutes. He switch high speed to low speed to high speed. So the field device cannot effort high speed, high frequency switch, switching. So the field device suffer physical damage in standard event. And in our case, we will do that. We will do something. But it just is a light, so it's not a real physical damage in our case. In our case, okay. So you will see every 30 seconds, he, uh, he will change the light. He will change the light. Okay, so I speed up here. So you will see the light on. Here is light on and light on. So every 30 seconds will change once. So usually in this case, in normal status, it's 30 seconds. And we will modify, we will modify the, the se seconds from 30 seconds to 10 seconds. From 10 seconds to 2 seconds. So here you will see, we will modify the cycle time to 10 seconds. Here is se 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds will change the light. Will change the light. And from 10 seconds, to two seconds and to the eight seconds. But finally back to the 30 seconds in here, in our demo. So you will see different light will be changed. Will be changed. And then we want to change it to the two seconds. So you will see, oh, it's very quickly, very fast switching the light. So in the standard event, in this moment, already made a physical damage in here, already. Okay, so from two seconds to eight seconds. So it's uh, automatic, it's pretty cool, so he will keep running. Yeah, so here, to eight seconds. So in this scenario, we use a command 4001. For the one, we use this command, and we success we successfully send the attack command to control this PLC. So it's very easy because we, from unknown protocol, from we research, we analyze, we made a exploit code, and successfully to attack, like this, like this, and this is a well shock mapping. So you will see our oh, 10, 10 seconds, ten seconds, two seconds. 8 seconds, 10, 30 seconds in here. And we use function code, batch write device in here, in here. Okay. So in this stage, in here, we want, I want to tell, told you, in ICS protocol, they have many common vulnerability, common problem. Usually, you will say, you will ask 
this protocol do not authentication, do not authorization, and no encryption, and some protocol will have uh, some stack overflow. So those problem, those security problem will lead fake command injection, fake response injection, denial of service attack and repair injection, or main middle attack. And those attack can make a huge impact in our ICS environment. We are made a huge impact in our IC environment. So it's very dangerous things. And you will say use use uh ICS protocol to attack is very, very hard. However, in this protocol, in this PLC, he provide a FTP service. And we just need to log in this FTP service and we will say we will we will see, oh, here is a man that QPG file. This is a PLC program file. So if we modify this file, we can make an error status and we can modify the control logic in this PLC, in the control process. So first, we stop this PLC and we delete the main QPG file and we confirm the file already deleted. And then we upload a new one. And this new one file is a malicious file. It's a malicious file. And we, in this case, we just made an error status. We just made this PLC to error status. And then we're running again. So you will see. In the before, the, before attack, it's a normal state is running. Keep, uh, keep operation running. Keep uh, run, running light is on. And uh, after attack, you will see the error light already, already light it in here, in here. And in, in, in this moment, in this moment, operation cannot run anymore because PLC cannot control, cannot monitor any things because attack already successfully. But however, in our case, attack control system is very easy. Yeah, it's, it's very easy because usually I say it's no security concept. I say it's no security concept. But how? How we protect our cybersecurity environment? Oh, my computer. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my computer is... It's failed. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I will say. According to ICS Street Strategy, ICS Cert in the United States, he proposed, uh, ICS Strategy told you, how, told us how to protect our ICS environment. And from this environment, we sum up five techni technique. And those te five technique can prevent 98% incident in ICS. First, we need to use this technical is a virtual patch. And, uh, per perimeter secured and Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> and uh, USB lockdown and lockdown solution and uh, networking whitelisting and networking whitelisting. And those five technical can prevent 98% incident in our ICS environment. But, you know, I have many, many sliding later, but my computer... Oh... Maybe wait a second, I change. Oh, great. Okay, switch. 
Oh, OK, OK. Change. Sorry, my slide came back. Sorry? OK, how to secure, sorry. Um, I want to, yeah, sum up a vulnerable IoT environment. So as we know, as we know, um, usually we have a showdown OT because we don't know what kinds of unknown, what kinds of device and what kind of connection in our network. And the insecure authentication and insecure protocol we are used in our ICS environment. And usually, ICS environment, they never patch. They never patch those HMI device, those third party software, they, they never patch. Because, you know, in OT, in ICS, they want to keep operation running. They don't want to patch any things. Let those things maybe make uh, some risk for them. So they don't want to do that. So he will, he, he never usually, ICS guys, OT guys never patch. Yeah, so here is a vulnerable OT environment. And then, yeah, according, according suggests the charge from ICA search, it will sum up, yeah, as you can see, perimeter defense, malware expansion, which are patch, and endpoint, and USB lockdown, and network whitelisting. Five technical can prevent 98% incident. Okay. And the first one, first one, FD, uh, segmentation and virtual patch, and you know, you know, if we deport a virtual patch solution, we deport virtual patch, and we can protect our HMI device, our Windows device, because network device we are block, we are filter, we are recognize the different signature about vulnerability, about attack packet. So if we use that, we can use virtual patch and uh, don't impact. Well, that will not long impact in the real ICC, uh device like a HMI or engineering workstation. So here you can see. And second one is network whitelisting. As we talk about in previously slide, we say usually ICS protocol, they don't authentication, authorization, and no encryptions. So network whitelisting control, we think is focused on the ICS protocol, like uh, Modbus, CCLink, or S S7 protocol. Lots of protocol, they don't support authentication. They don't support authorization. So everyone, OT guide can send command to PLC, but hacker can do that also. So if we use network control, network wrestling control, we can protect our PLC. Only receive, only is execute the right command from right guys. We can, we can, we can protect this. Okay. So here is network wrestling control. And then lockdown, lockdown mission and critical access. You know, because uh, in our experience, many, many attack want to use ransomware, want to use different file to attack HMI. So if we want to uh, HMI, we need to use a ransomware file and put it in the HMI device, right? However, if the ransomware already, uh, once ransomware running, the attack will successfully. So this lockdown, it's focused on the application. It's focused on our process and configuration in the HMI device or workstation, engineering workstation. So if we lock the process, only permit the process, the application in this HMI, and ransomware cannot run, cannot run in, in, the SH, in our HMI because only permit application, only permit process can run this HMI. So even the ransomware in our HMI, but they cannot run. So they cannot infect, they cannot attack, attack successfully to the, our ICS environment. So, plan for worst, keep operation running. So, the OT guide, in OT, in OT guide's mind, they want to keep operation running. So if we pre perform the segmentation with secure mission to a critical access, we permit the events, and we can pre pre prevent we can prevent kinds of event in the ICS, in the ICS. And in my final, final slides, for the clarification for OT cyber events, defense in deep. And here, this is a, a beautiful 
picture from outside to inside, you know, in the, yeah. So in the IT, OTD and Z, we can prevent prevention and to detention to the OT, manufacturing wrong, we detection, detect the different threats, different attack. And in our cell area wrong, we put systems, we perform persistence. We can use different segmentation, protect our mission critical, uh, secure mission critical access, retro patch and different, and uh, wirelessing control. We can protect our most important wrong in our ICS environment. So we, I will say, if we want to perform ICS environment, ICS security, defense in deep is a very important things. Okay. And um, it's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, oh, there's one here. Hey, hi, this yeah. is Gagan from Dark Matter. I have a question regarding uh, securing the critical ICS, for example, uh, nuclear reactors. To avoid any disaster, you said ICS have certain vulnerabilities and everything. Yeah. So how you make sure it's a robust infrastructure, especially when it comes to securing the nuclear reactors? Uh, sorry, can you repeat a final last sentence? How to prevent, how to come from? Yeah, more uh, focus on the securing the nuclear reactors. Yeah, six attack vectors. Yeah, in case of any attacks, then how you make sure they are not lead to the disaster as like Chernobyl? Uh, so your main is uh, how to confirm the six attack vectors already can prevent in our ICS attack. Um, actually, yeah, because according to ICS search, according to ICS search strategy, those attack vectors already include in the resource strategy because we if we use the well uh, virtual patch, we can prevent software attack. We can prevent server attack, and if we use the uh, network wireless thing. We can prevent the um, communication protocol attack, and also if we lock down, we can make sure we can make sure unknown connection cannot infect our ICS environment. Yeah, like this. So this is my answer. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions from the crowd? Hey, do you have any latest attack on ICS and uh, the modus operandi and how these five parameters can prevent that? Uh, sorry, your question is how to... Do you have any data about the latest ICS attack and its modus operandi and how these five, uh, you know, uh, prevention methods can could have, you know, detected or prevented that? Actually, actually, in our... In our experience, because we will discuss kinds of uh, uh, strategy to protect our ICS environment, yeah, network wireless thing, and we will use different method like her machine learning to learning different behavior to detect her, the be attacker behavior and to prevent. Let me rephrase. Do you have any real world ICS attack that has happened recently? And what was the modus operandi and how this could could have been, you know, prevented that attack. I, I'm not sure your your question. Yeah, in the how about you talk about uh, in recent the ICS attack and how we we, we how we how we uh prevent or defense is your question. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let me repeat. Do you have any real world ICS attack that has happened recently? Um, and what was the behavior of that attack and how this, this, the, the five mentioned prevention methods could have, you know, avoided that attack? Yeah. Uh, in recent, we detected kinds of attack about ICS is like APT attack. And in final, he want to use the connect to CNC server. So connect to CNC server and perform malware. So, you know, like a uh, network traffic, many, many network traffic will go through the IC environment. So we will detect it because, uh, like malware, they want to connect to CNC. Hey, uh, or like a uh, diff unknown command want to control POC. So in recent, we detect like those attack. 
So loss attack we can provide use uh, network wide listing and uh, you, we can use virtual patch to defend it, defense it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It's actually uh, very nice, uh, very well formed. Um, one thing that you didn't talk about is uh, potential isolation of, of affected devices as a as another way of uh, uh, security protection. So, no matter what, how many walls you build, fundamentally devices you protect will always be exposed and are unprotectable. So, uh, how do you see the val? Uh, how do you see the value, or where do you see uh, the value of uh, actually isolating a quarantine and running a quarantine on on a device that is detected to be uh, infected? Uh, your question is how to identify this attack. Uh, where where or- do you see do you see a value of isolation, uh, quarantine of the devices, or or uh, do you assume that building various walls of security perimeter would be if, uh, sufficient? Actually, I'm not research about this too much, too much. So I think maybe I cannot answer this question. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the audience? We have one more over there. Yeah, I would like to take that question, like siloing, you know, infected machines is always a very good idea. I think it's not the file, like it could have, could have been like six preventive measures. Thank you. <laughs> um, any other questions? Um, we have a few questions from Slido. Okay. Um, assuming a very long update cycle for OT setups from industry vendors perspective, what is your view about the future with the most secure environment with, for example, protocol level issues fixed? Actually, we think if we really want to protect our ICS environment, we think from vendor, from PLC, from kinds of industry vendor to do. Because made so many, so many PLC vendor will provide their own private protocol. So if those protocols support authentication, support authorization and encryption. And we can base, we can make a minimal security concept in those, con- in those security. Yeah. So we think in the future, we need to build a secure concept in the different PLC, in the industry now, renders yeah, like this. Thank you. Um, and, and the next one is, can you elaborate on the HMI attack, which you mentioned? What is the attack surface or attack vectors? And what, how is the device connected? Does it support Zigbee as well? Actually, HMI have many, many types. And, um, yeah, usually HMI maybe will provide a web application, will provide wireless thing, a wireless connection, like a ZB, like a Wi-Fi, like a Z-Wave. Because in different industry, they have many different, uh, they have many different, um, HMI type. So I have to say, because HMI is very, very complicated device. So they have many software in the HMI. They have many physical devices in HMI. So I think, yeah. Um, Maybe you could talk about the one you mentioned in your slides. Yeah, yeah. So there's this support as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. Because, um, in real, in, 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 I know, as I know, as I know, if the HMI use the wireless technology, also PLC will support it. Well support. So it's different at the event because it's usually it's a combined to a, a set. Because, um, how to say, usually if we use HMI, it's Siemens HMI and we will use H, uh, Siemens PLC. So it's a set. So in different vendors, they will provide a different attack vectors to me, to us. So, uh, as I, as my slide, uh, I just show a comment, comment attack vectors in our ISIS environment. Yeah. Okay. And if you would like to see the slides again, it will be uploaded on the website, cyberweek.ae slash materials. You, you'll be able to download the slides. Um, and the last question to prepare an attack, is it necessary to own the device targeted? 
to do that, or is it possible to do it live? Um, as a research, as a researcher, I I just buy one to do research. I not perform any attack in the internet. Yeah, yeah. And I don't ever test uh any perform kinds of attack in the internet. I have to say in this day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, let's give a hand to Mars again.